Hello, and welcome to Backer Breaks It Down. In this episode, we continue working with dilations, this time at the center of dilation, not at the origin. It was pretty easy to dilate a figure on the coordinate plane when the center was at the origin because we just had to multiply our coordinates by the scale factor. We're still going to multiply by the scale factor. It's just a little more involved than that, okay? Um, so when the center of dilation is not at the origin, start by plotting that center point on your coordinate plane. And then pick one of your pre-image points, find its coordinates. Um, you want to look for the vertical distance um, that that point is from the center of dilation and the horizontal distance. Once you know those distances, you're gonna multiply those distances by the scale factor, and that will determine your new distances. And from there, you're gonna start from the center of dilation going in that direction, okay? We kind of did something similar to this earlier in the semester when we were partitioning a line segment. Remember that? Okay. So here, number one, it says dilate by a scale factor of one third with center of dilation at three zero. So notice that like I have plotted my center of dilation right here, okay? Now I drew in some guidelines um, to kind of like help me see um, the pathway from the center of dilation to each of my vertices. So if I focus on this one right here, I can determine those two distances. So like I have a vertical distance of three and I have a horizontal distance of nine, okay? And they say that I should multiply these by my scale factor of one third. So nine times one third is three and three times one third is one. And this will give me my new distance from the center of dilation. So I want to go three, one. So here is my new coordinate. And I should do that with each of the remaining um, vertices. So if you think about it, what I'm essentially working with here, those vertical and horizontal distances, are the rise and the run. I'm working with slope. So I'm basically working with the slope of all those guidelines. And then I'm multiplying each part of my slope by the scale factor. So my slope isn't changing, it's just the location of the vertice that's changing, if you think about it. So like this point here, I have the same vertical distance of three. This time I have a horizontal distance of six. So if I multiply each of those by one third, let's see, I'm going to go one and six times three is two. Okay, so ultimately I end up with this tiny little triangle right there. I know it's like really, really small. Okay, so we plot our center of dilation. Okay, and if you wanna draw in those guidelines to kind of help you see, then by all means you should do that. I'm dilating this time by scale factor of four thirds. So I need to pick one of my vertices and look at those vertical and horizontal distances. So this one has a vertical distance of three, and a horizontal distance of three from my center of dilation, I'm gonna multiply each of those by four thirds. So three times four thirds is four. And well, that's gonna be the same, okay? So from the center of dilation, I wanna go in the same direction. So up and left, so up four and left four. So I'm looking at this point right here. So then I can repeat with this one. So this one is also a vertical distance of three, but it has a horizontal distance of six, okay? So six times four thirds, let's see, we're looking at 24 over three, so that's eight. And that other one is three, so I'm looking at four. So I'm once again going up four, but this time I'm going over eight, okay? And then this one doesn't have a vertical distance, it just has a horizontal distance. And so six times four thirds, I already know is eight. So here is my dilated figure, okay? But I really do feel that those little guidelines 
are a really good visual because you can kind of work with slope then and like using a factor of the slope. Um, when you have to go backwards and you have to find the scale factor and center of dilation, those guidelines are super helpful in finding the center of dilation. Okay. Um, number three, I really don't need to draw the guidelines because you it's pretty obvious. Like, but by when I say guidelines, I mean you want to take um, like if you look at number four quickly, you want to um, use like a straight edge and you want to draw a guideline that connects like point L to L prime. And like I extended it because I'm trying to figure out where my center of dilation is. And you want to do that for all your corresponding vertices. So M and M prime, draw a line and N prime, O, O prime. And so you'll notice like they're all intersecting right here. And that point is your center of dilation. So in number four, I know I skipped four, I'm sorry, um, has a center of dilation of negative six, three. Now the scale factor, remember scale factor is always image over pre-image. And I can use like distances, um, the figure is from the center of dilation, or I can use um, side lengths, whichever one's easier for you. Now, when you have vertical and or horizontal sides to work with, side lengths are pretty easy to use. So like LM is six units long and L prime M prime is three units long. So if I go image over three pre-image, I have uh, three over six, which is one half. And that's my scale factor. So going back to number three, like those guidelines aren't necessary because like they're part of the dilation, if you think about it. So here we have the typical center of dilation at zero, zero. The scale factor, well, if I work with linear measurements, because that's pretty easy to do here, and I do image over pre-image, I have 8 over 4, and 8 over 4 becomes 2 over 1, or you can simply write 2, okay? Um, so if it's not obvious what your center of dilation is, draw in those guidelines, just use a straight edge and connect your vertices, your corresponding vertices, and that's what I did here, number 5, you can see my guidelines. And all of three of those guidelines are intersecting at the point five five, which means five five is the center of dilation. As far as the scale factor goes, I can work with corresponding linear measurements. So if I go from B prime to C prime, that's six. B to C is three. Scale factor is image over pre-image. So I'm looking at a scale factor of two or two over one. Either one works. And number six, notice my guidelines are there. Here I have a simple center of dilation of zero, zero. Now, if you're looking at this and wondering like, what is the scale factor? Sorry, I don't know why that's not working. Um, there's like no horizontal and vertical sides. So this is where we need to remember that the distance points are from the center of dilation helps too. So like A, and here's my center of dilation here, is nine units from the center of dilation, okay? A prime is three units from the center of dilation. So my scale factor is image over pre-image, and I can use the image distance from the center, pre-image distance from the center, three over nine is one third, and that's my scale factor. Okay, And so that's how we can um, graph dilations um, on the origin, I'm sorry, on the coordinate plane when the center is not at the origin, okay? Those guidelines are super helpful in doing the graphing, but especially helpful in trying to figure out what that center of dilation is, okay? Um, and so there you have it. That's how back air breaks it down.